What's up guys, it's Cassie and Sarah, and today we're talking about one of the FBI's most wanted, Bradford Bishop. So if you like watching murder mysteries, make sure you hit that subscribe button and keep on watching. In 1974, Bradford Bishop was working at the State Department headquarters in Washington, D.C. as an assistant chief in the Division of Special Activities and Commercial Treaties. On March 1st, 1976, after learning he would not receive a promotion he had sought, Bishop told his secretary he did not feel well and left his office. Police believe he drove to his bank where he withdrew several hundred dollars then to Montgomery Mall where he bought a sledgehammer and a gas can. He also filled the gas can in the tank of his 1974 Chevrolet station wagon at an adjacent gas station. From there he drove to a hardware store where he purchased a shovel and a pitchfork. He returned to his home in Bethesda between 7 30 and 8 p.m. Police believe his wife was likely killed first then his mother as she returned from walking the family dog. Finally, his three sons, aged 5, 10, and 14, were killed while they slept in an upstairs bedroom. He allegedly drove the bodies 275 miles in the station wagon to a densely wooded swamp about 5 miles south of Columbia, North Carolina, where on March 2nd, he dug a shallow hole where he piled the bodies and set them ablaze with gasoline. Found with the burned bodies were a gas can, a pitchfork, and a shovel with the label of O. CH HDW, which was determined to be from Potch's hardware. Bishop is known to have purchased tennis shoes at a sporting goods store in Jacksonville, North Carolina later that same day. According to witnesses, he had the family dog with him and was possibly accompanied by a woman described as dark-skinned. On March 10th, a neighbor of Bishop's contacted police after not seeing the family for some time. A detective found blood on the Bishop home's front porch and on the floor and walls of the front hall and bedrooms. Dental records were used to confirm that the bodies found in North Carolina were of Bishop's family. On March 18th, Bishop's station wagon was found abandoned at an isolated campground in Elkmont, Tennessee at the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, a few miles from the Appalachian Trail and about 400 miles from the site where his family was buried. The car contained dog biscuits, a bloody blanket, a shotgun, an axe, and a shaving kit with Bishop's medication. The trunk's spare tire well was full of blood. A witness believed the car had been there since anywhere between March 5th to the 7th. Police theorized that Bishop joined the flow of hikers on the Appalachian Trail and attempted to follow his scent with bloodhounds, but without success. The following day, a grand jury indicted Bishop on five counts of first-degree murder and other charges. Okay, so Bradford Bishop was like, I don't know, I kind of, I don't want to say I like him, but it was like kind of cool. Because like, just hear me out, okay? So he was like a part of all this like cool stuff, right? He's like the assistant chief, blah, blah, blah. Then he just says, oh, I don't feel well because I didn't get the job that I wanted. And he's like, see ya. And then he goes and gets money, murders his whole family. <laughs> and then just disappears. I don't know. I just kind of like no. it. No, as cool as like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, but like... I just kind of like it because eventually I think, he's put on the FBI's most wanted list, and I just think that's And, cool. like, they haven't been able to, like, catch him, and he could be, like, anywhere right exactly. now. Exactly. Or possibly dead. Who knows? That's, yeah, kind of my thing's going. But I mean, we'll hear more about, like, all that other stuff. Yeah. But I wonder if he had been, like, planning this ahead of time. Like... Like, if he didn't, like, if he didn't get the promotion... Like, he was going to do X, Y, and Z, or maybe the promotion was just, like... Or, like, if he did the, get the promotion, like, do you think everything would have been fine? Like, maybe this... Maybe, like, the promotion was, like, the stressor. Yeah. But I feel like if it wasn't premeditated, how would he have, like, evaded everybody for so long? You know, like, murdered his entire family, drove them across the country, and then still hasn't been found. Bishop's motives have never been fully explained. A 1977 article in the Washington Post reported that there was no evidence of infidelity or financial or job problems. Although Bishop had been passed over for promotion, there was no history of work-related issues. His being passed over has been described as the first glitch in the storybook tale. It has been reported that his career had caused some marital tension. He was unhappy at his desk job and interested in another foreign posting, but his wife Annette was reluctant. She had 
began to study art at the University of Maryland despite his desire for her to remain a stay-at-home mom. Most sources agree that the bishops were experiencing some financial issues, but there has been disagreement as to their severity. The Post reported in 1986 that the issues were mild and familiar to most upwardly mobile families. John E. Douglas described them as nothing terribly unusual for people in their 30s living in that kind of neighborhood. In 2013, Bethesda Magazine reported that the Internal Revenue Services, or IRS, have been auditing the family's taxes due to financial troubles. The existence of the audit has not been confirmed by the IRS or the FBI. The FBI states that Bishop is an avid outdoorsman who enjoys camping and hiking and reports that he had a pilot's license from when he was stationed in Africa. He also enjoys riding motorcycles and working out every week. He has a history of depression and insomnia, having been afflicted with both conditions and taking Cerax in the time leading up to the murders. Bishop has a six inch vertical scar on his lower back from surgery, a cleft chin, and a facial mole on his left cheek. He may have had his father's Smith & Wesson M&P 38 special revolver with the serial number C981967 and his Yale class ring with him when he vanished. He is also believed to have taken his diplomatic passport with him as the family's diplomatic passports were all found at their home but his was missing. They don't think that, like, money and stuff and his job really caused Were, like, the stressors. Yeah, but maybe he, if it wasn't the stressor, maybe he'd just use it as, in, like, an excuse. excuse. Like, like oh, it's worked in my favor. And, like, it's like, pretend I'm so sad and whatever. And I'm just depression and, and insomnia finally got to him. So then a little bit um, at the end there was kind of about, like, how he's, like, an outdoorsman and very, like, yeah, the. So profile. it kind of, like, insinuates that he could have just, like, with the Appalachian Trail, he could be literally anywhere. Anywhere? Like, he can be literally anywhere? He could literally be anywhere. He could literally be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the um, only one with a mushy brain. <laughs> no, I just spit out whatever just comes up. If he has his pilot's license, dude. Dude. That just expands everything. Ooh. Like, everything. Could, yeah, and he has his diplomatic passport. <laughs> they kind of like, like he's like the perfect person to just run away and not be found yeah honestly like he's fit like he loves the outdoors so he probably knows how to camp and to survive yeah bishop had approximately one week of advance time before the authorities began looking for him it has been suggested that he could have traveled on his diplomatic passport fbi special agent in charge stated in 2014 that neither bishop's wallet nor passport have ever been found it has also been speculated that Bishop may have had intelligence training in the 1960s, which may have helped him evade detection in 1976. Since 1976, Bishop has allegedly been cited a number of times in various European countries, including Italy, Belgium, England, Finland, the Netherlands, Germany, Greece, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. The three most credible sightings noted by the United States Marshals Service are in July 1978 in Ethiopia, in January 1979 in Italy, and in September 1994 on a train platform in a different country. Obviously, the FBI is looking for him. Mm -hmm. He's been spotted in new, like, a, kind of a lot of places. But, people think, though. But yeah, like, like, these are, like, not with, like, the like FBI's own eyes. This is no, just, like, like, from people. Citizens reporting yeah. that they've seen him. Yeah, so it's hard to say that they were real settings or mm -hmm. not, but it's possible because he has his passport, so. Yeah. In 2010, authorities believe Bishop was living in Switzerland, Italy, or elsewhere in Europe, or possibly in California. He may have worked as a teacher or become involved in criminal activities. Authorities revealed in 2010 that before the murders, Bishop had been corresponding with federal prison inmate Albert Bankston, although it is unknown why or how. Bishop evidently had instructed Bankston to send letters to his State Department office address, America's most most Wanted posted the last letter on its website, which Bankston mailed 16 days after the murders without knowing that they had happened or that Bishop was a fugitive unable to receive mail at his office. Bankston died in 1983 before law enforcement discovered his connection to Bishop in 1993. In 2014, authorities stated Bishop was probably living in plain sight in the United States and avoiding discovery by avoiding arrest. Being arrested would enable law enforcement to run his fingerprints and catch him. 
That same year, at the request of FBI, forensic artist Karen Taylor created an age progression sculpture to suggest Bishop's projected appearance at about age 77. Using Taylor's sculpture, several alternative images were created by Lisa Shepard to show the addition of facial hair and glasses. They think that he's not in the United States necessarily. I mean, he could be, but they yeah. think he's probably in a different country because of all the sightings. And then they also decided, well, actually in 2014, so not that long ago, they said, let's make like a new facial reconstructive thing about mm -hmm. like how he would look at that time. So maybe they could still catch him. Um, clearly hasn't worked yet. Yeah. I kind of think that like, He's definitely in a different country. Yeah, like, I, I think, think so too. I States. don't think he's that stupid to be in the United States. No. But I also don't know why he killed his entire family. Because, like, it seemed like he was okay. I mean, yeah. Maybe he just snapped. Maybe. Yeah, it's just like some, some people it takes, you know, there's that, like, little thing. For some people it takes, like, a bigger stressor. Yeah. And again, he had the other mental illnesses. So who knows what else he could have had that was, like, high yeah. underneath. That was the story of Bradford Bishop and kind of how he is on the FBI most wanted list. He's off of it now because they decided let's put some more like threatening criminals yeah. on there. But he was on it at one point in time. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment so that we know you enjoyed it. Yes, comment your theories down below. Like what you think. Like do you think he's dead? Do you think he's alive? Where do you think he is? Like yeah. what do you think he's doing? Yeah. Um, um, also comment other people. That you, you want us to do, yeah. Because we're running low. And make sure you follow our social media. It'll be in the description below. down below. Turn on um, your post notifications. Sorry we're doing this really fast. Like, <laughs> all our batteries have been dying. Uh, yeah, so So good. if, like, things look kind of different, it's because they are. We will see you guys next Friday. Peace!